schools that are not licensed or you know, defer stop. So today we are going to talk about ICU for X. Am I? Oh man, this is uh, a little bit too loud. So the agenda for today, we are going to talk about what ICU for X is meant for, who we are, um, then what's happening, where we are currently, what our plans are, and what we did since the last time we presented, and then why would you care about ICU for X? What are the performance gains? What are the size gains? Um, does it work? We actually have a demo <laughs> to show. It's recorded, it's not, it's not a counterfeit thing. Um, is it used already? And is it ready to be used? And, uh, and the last one is how can you help? So what is ICU4X and who are we? Uh, we are the group of INTN experts. Um, from Mozilla and Google mostly, uh, but we are welcoming any any contributions from others. And we are core contributors to a bunch of standards and, and uh, open source libraries. So what is the focus of, of ICU4X? First is consistent INTN logic across languages and platforms. So technically write once and then use everywhere and you get the same results if you use the same data. So we expose our um, interfaces through FFI, so Foreign Function Interface, so you can use it from C, C++, Java, .NET, Python, whatnot, through FFI, or you can use Wasm, uh, uh, transpiled almost code into Wasm and then load into your JavaScript. Uh, the second goal is to have a modular code and data that you can use on less powerful devices like wearables, or and so you should be paying only for what you use, not intr introduce the whole kitchen sink into your product. And we are aiming at you being able to load data locally and load from async service like the previous talk mentioned uh, the CLDR as a service thing, right? And we are laser focused on performance, size, and security, which Zip is going to cover in the, in the second session. Uh, in case you are ready to contribute and, and help us, uh, we are governed by Unicode. We are subcommittee of ICU technical committee, and we uh, run under dual Apache 2.0 and MIT license. So uh, Shane is going to take over and tell you what, what's going on right now and what our plans are and how far did we get so far. Shane. Okay, great. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for coming to, the, to our talk. I know there's a lot of other great talks at this slot. Really glad that, that you came to ours. Um, so I'm going to just do a laundry list of all the things that you can do with IC4X uh, now and the things that you'll be able to do with IC4X extremely soon. Uh, first, I want to do this dates and times slide. Um, let's see, G Greg and uh, Eric, uh, you can, uh, I, don't, I don't see Greg here. Uh, oh, there's Greg. Greg and Eric, yeah, are, um, are, are two of the champions behind this of, of, with uh, ZB also. Um, we support um, uh, dates and times and uh, d date and time formatting. Here's some example code in Rust uh, to show how uh, you can uh, use this. In IC for X, we support date style, time style, we support um, basic time zones, hour cycle preferences, UTS-35 style components bags. Very soon we have, um, we have non-Gregorian calendars coming, next generation components bags, and advanced time zones. Those are some of the uh, things that are coming up here. You can already do this in IC4X. Uh, it already works, already runs. The second uh, category in the laundry list of things you can do is numbers and plurals. I'm one of the champions here and uh, also ZB for the plural stuff. Um, last year, you could already do uh, plural rules and cardinal and ordinal selection. Um, the things that have changed since last year's talk to now, there's a lot of that's changed since last year's talk to now in IC for X, but um, one of the big things here is, is a fixed decimal format, so we support number formatting. And coming soon is uh, measurement units and, and, and currencies. Um, here's some more example Rust code for this. 
Uh, the next slide, um, locale data, that's, that's definitely my, my wheelhouse. Um, available last year, we only supported loading from uh, JSON files, uh, but now we support loading from static data blobs. We support zero copy deserialization, which means that you don't have to allocate any memory at all to use IC for X, which is super exciting. And we also support uh, loading um, async uh, data, and we'll see a little bit of that in the demo coming up soon. Um, coming soon, we uh, will have we're supporting user-friendly data slicing, and we have uh, we're going to be implementing um, vertical local cal fallbacks and the, all those kinds of things to make this uh, all completely ready. So the next uh, s the next slide here is languages and locales. Uh, we've got Dan, um, who's uh, who's not able to come to the conference uh, today, and we also have ZB, who's done a lot of work in this uh, category. Um, Last year in 2020, we already had language identifier, locale, and subtags, and syntax chemicalization. Um, now we have likely subtags and aliases. Um, and I, uh, we consider ourselves mostly feature complete with languages and locales at this point coming soon. Various minor enhancements around the edges, a um, couple of minor spec compliance things um, is uh, fairly good. Um, Let's keep going here. Uh, another really cool thing that we have already in IC4X and a bi uh, big change since last year uh, is FFI and WebAssembly. Last year we talked about this as sort of a pipe dream, like we want to be able to do this. Guess what? You can do it now. And we have a demo coming up soon to show you to prove that we actually can do it. Um, we, we've made a lot of great progress here. Um, we support, pro we have a new uh, project diplomat. Uh, we had an, um, uh, we've uh, had an intern this summer as well as others on the team working on this that's, that allows us to quickly scale IC4X to many programming languages. We support, um, we already support C, C++, and JavaScript. JavaScript via WebAssembly, we've got that whole uh, process um, set up and it runs, it runs well. Um, we have Project Diplomat, which means that um, in order to support additional programming languages, it just uh, takes a very small amount of code, and then all of IC4X is available in your programming language. Uh, we support no STD for core crates, which means that IC4X now runs really well on, on uh, resource constrained devices and IoT uh, devices. Um, we also have done a lot of work on code size minimization. Um, we get our very, very small uh, binaries. Um, coming soon is uh, contributors to continue to scale to new programming languages. Um, yeah, so this is an example of using IC for X from C++. Uh, the next category, uh, Alongo, Ian, Tingyu, and Henry, I think uh, maybe Alongo is here. There's Alongo is uh, doing a lot of work on Unicode properties and text utilities. So last year we had Unicode set and Unicode set builder, and we had static constructors for common properties, but now we have binary Unicode properties as well as um, as well as some of the enumerated properties, general category and script. Coming soon, um, we're going to fill out the rest of the enumerated properties. We're also going to support properties of strings, and also in the pipeline is segmenter and collator, also very important pieces required for ECMA 402 compliance, which of course, um, as Navoisha mentioned, is, is what, we're, what we're focusing on is in terms of, of feature completeness. So all those things that I just listed are um, basically, what we support now, again, our goal is to um, start by supporting the full ECMA 402 feature set. Uh, we're um, making progress. Uh, we're not quite there yet, but we're making a lot of progress um, and starting to get, to get close to feature completeness. So now I'm going to turn it over to, I think this is ZB section, who's going to, to show some really cool graphs for uh, why you should use IC for X. Hi, so, so as Shane was um, explaining, we, we put a lot of effort to reinvent how, not reinvent actually, to build on top of how ICU4C resolves um, internationalization. We have at our disposal not only the experience of previous generation of experts who design all of those basic APIs, but we also have modern programming languages and ecosystems that we can tap into and that gives us opportunity to not only solve the problems like modularity, um, size constraints, and ability to uh, create single code base that runs on many ecosystems, but we can also use the, uh, the modern algorithmics to improve some con uh, considerations of per performance and memory. And I wanted to show you several things that we've done so far and we're not done yet. So here's an example of a size impact of a C++ file or C++ program. Uh, that has been uh, enhanced by addition of a locale class from IC4C and IC4X um, and date time. You can notice 
um, a pretty major improvement in, in, in the impact on the, on the code base. And that has been achieved because the programming language we use originally does a really good job of helping us modularize our, our components so that we actually have to be very careful of the boundaries uh, to understand what component depends on which component. We also use heavily dead code elimination to minimize the impact. And in the demo that Shane will be showing later, that translates tr really well into the web ecosystem where on the web, when you want to load a, a website and you want to load a component, we do not want to pull a 20 megabyte a monolithic blob of, of uh, code. Neither we want to pull a 20 megabyte um, blob of data. Um, so the, the uh, system we're we are building, building uh, IC4X in allows us and helps us to keep things small. So what you can believe is happening here, especially on the, on the right side of the chart, is that we are pulling the very minimum of the data and algorithms um, that are necessary to uh, power the, the formatting that we were trying to do here. That also almost naturally translates into performance wins. So local operations are data free, um, but we were able to, uh, to tap into security features of how Rust uh, treads um, strings. And, um, and thanks to that, we were able to design a system that is fairly fast at parsing and serialization. So you can see um, an example taken from um, Mozilla Firefox uh, startup, where during the startup, we actually have to parse 1,000 uh, locales from a string into a, into a structure, a validated structure. And, and you can see the, the performance difference between ICU4C70 and ICU4X04, uh, upcoming 04. The, the matching is faster as well, and um, serialization of the locales is also much, much faster. So the next part is selecting plural rules. This is actually before the performance optimizations plan for 04 uh, are kicking in. I'm working on it right now, so I'm very excited to have this chart look even better soon, but uh, already we are, we're in a pretty good uh, place. If you remember the talk from last year uh, Unicode conference, we were saying that our goal at the time was to not be slower. We wanted to make sure that we can validate the claim that 20 years of accrued performance optimizations that ICU4C um, has can be matched uh, by ICU4X. Releasing ICU4X that would be slower wouldn't be really appealing. So now we not only match it, we start um, exceeding uh, the, the, the baseline that we set for ourselves. And here is uh, my, my latest um, exci personal excitement because I just landed it like a couple of weeks ago. Um, you can see the, uh, the formatting of daytime uh, in 100 cases. So it's uh, 10 locales times 10 different combinations of lengths of dates and times uh, times 10 dates. So it's, it's a thousand format, formattings. Um, and IC4C versus IC4X in, in nanoseconds, um, we, we are um, quite a bit faster and uh, we believe we can still be, be faster um, and over the next two months we expect to land a couple optimizations here. Um, the next part is um, heap allocations. That's also tremendously important for um, wearables, IoT devices, and the web where we want to minimize the, the heap allocation so we in the, in the last year presentation, we promised that we're going to be heavily monitoring every comet against size, memory, and performance, um, so that CPU performance, so that we can actually um, make sure that we're we're working and incentivizing the whole community that works on IC4X to um, to maintain the characteristics that we're aiming for. Uh, here is an example of how we monitor every comet against the total heap allocations. This is an example of uh, an example program using a daytime format and a global memory maximum, which says that at no point this program exceeds um, 30 kilobytes in memory. Am I, is it my still section? Uh, I think this is where I start again. Okay, uh, <laughs> great, so this is the uh, slide you've all been waiting for. The, the, the demo, last year we didn't really have a demo. Uh, we have a, a demo now. Oh, Firefox Developer Tools demo. Um, who, uh, Come on, Eric. This, so this is the a new demo. This is the demo of Firefox um, work that we put. Excellent. I haven't even seen this demo. So excited. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Uh, I'm Eric. I'm a software engineer at Mozilla. I just put this together quickly and used the Diplomat FFI bindings to um, take our C++ FFI and 
build Firefox uh, using IC4X. So this is just a quick video recording. If it will play, yeah. Uh, oh, unable to play video. Error five. Error five. <laughs> 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 try, try escaping. I just try to, to refresh. So the reason the reason why we wanted to show this is that um, we want to send a message to the uh, to the audience today that. While we still are increasing the, the capabilities of the, of the project, at the same time, the project is already capable of powering a large software with 100 million users like Firefox browser. Um, it doesn't supply all the needs we have, but for the components that we already have, like recall, plural, date, time, and basic number formatting, we already can use it. Um, you can actually build Firefox with IC4X, and that's what Eric did. Ready? Error five. Error five. Can you just go to the link, the YouTube link? Is it on YouTube? Just go to YouTube. Uh, it's not on YouTube. It's, it's just on Google Drive, Drive but it, it should be shared with everyone. Um, we may have to. That is, that is unfortunate. Yeah. <laughs> can, you, can we try to, yeah. I think we should, uh, we should move on, but like, um, we promise it works. <laughs> I wanted to try fixing the video on your laptop and then we'll play the other videos. Now. Sure, I can try to do that. Okay, let's try uh, another three. demo. Let's try the second demo. Okay, uh, cool. So this is the, the demo I, I put together. This is uh, using IC4X uh, in JavaScript via WebAssembly. Let's see if it likes this video. What, error five? First up to project. I know for a fact this one. Look, it even has a screenshot. Are we Let's try pulling it here. The we are. Is there a chance that you're not in the Google Drive? The Unicode Google Drive? Are you like, this is your Unicode account? I don't have no idea what account this is. Ah. No, it, it, it's publicly shared though. Mm -mm. I tested it. You're, try to switch to Unicode account. Um, so the, the three demos that I'm going to describe to you right now <laughs> is we have a demo of um, a Firefox uh, built with, um, Firefox is mostly a C++ code base. It's a very old code base, over 20 years old. Um, so integrating, it's a very large code base. So integrating IC4X into it using the project that Shane described called Diplomat allowed us to fairly nicely fit uh, Mozilla accrued coding standards for C++ um, with the FFI produced C++ headers and C headers from, um, from Rust. We also have a demo, I'm gonna say it, we have a demo of a website running IC4X and we have an example of a little Qt, um, web, uh, Qt framework application on Linux running um, with um, IC4X. I was going to use incognito mode, but this is already open in incognito mode, so I'm just going to have to sign in. Maybe incognito mode is not exactly what Google Drive is excited about. <laughs> and we made recordings so that we can have nice good right. without <laughs> Yeah, we, we, we recorded the video specifically because we wanted them to work. We could just play a video, and now the videos don't work. And I have no idea why, because I Are tested them. Are there any them. questions about IC4X? <laughs> In the meantime, excuse me. So we are currently there is a talk in an hour about message format two, uh, which is our upcoming um, project on uh, iteration of message format directly for for the web. Uh, we do plan, and in the roadmap of message format two, you will find um, a piece about a plan to put a proof of concept in IC4X early next year. The question whether we will support message format 1.0 slightly depends on how compatible message format 2 will be with message format 1. There is a path that we are exploring in which message format 2.0 would natively support message format 1, in which case we would not need two APIs. We would just provide you message format 2 API, but you would be able to load resources from message format 1. The question whether this is a path we can take is 
right now on the table. Um, so I, I invite you to come to the message format two presentation where we will talk more about the consideration constraints and sure. that's a very different experience. So it's a, it's a, it's a lot of that is, um, is uh, CPU bound uh, improvements. Some of that is we load less data, which is surprisingly translates into a lot of performance improvements because the, the, um, the nature of, the, the previous the presentation was showing the CLDR as a service. What surprises while working on that is that a lot of um, considerations around data loading happen where you load the data and you don't only, only use it once. So it's like jitting your code that you only loop once through. It's, it's inefficient. Uh, it's very rare that you, that you parse data and you use it a lot of times in production, which means that if you cannot load some code, that's data that's beneficial. Uh, can we move to demos in the order then, if they are Yes, ready? let's go ahead. Uh, right. So someone had cookies blocked and apparently that broke um, the... So, so this is part of it. The other part is that Rust, as a very modern language, uh, has actually really good support for thinking about uh, Unicode strings in a safe way. And I see you out of all things works a lot with Unicode strings. So we can reason about performance um, and, and build a logic that is performant and safe. A lot of decisions in IC4C go in the direction of trying not to get out of bound memory we, that we are not constrained about or avoid concurrency uh, race conditions that we are Rust just makes it impossible. So the fact that we're using more modern language from the class of like Kotlin, Swift, and, and Rust gives us ability to, to improve edge performance. But I would say at least 50% of the value of the performance wins that you saw comes from Shane's work on, on data, um, data packaging uh, and minimizing how much data we load and reasoning about what you really need to load in order to do what you ask us to do. And, and of course, minimal allocation also helps. So I would say that the battery life should really be affected. We did not measure this yet, but size, memory, performance should translate into, into, into wins. I would love to uh, start measuring that soon. Perfect, all right, so here's the demo um, of building, we built Firefox with IC4X, and this is the next slide. Um, <laughs> But here's the developer tools window. Uh, here I'm creating a new plural rules object for Arabic and using JavaScript to get the resolved options and grab the plural categories. Um, and then we can select from different numbers to get their category uh, directly from JavaScript in the browser um, with Firefox directly using ICU4X to um, do all these operations. And then uh, just the code on the left for categories and on the right for select. Uh, since we're able to use the nice diplomat FFI bindings, we get these nice C++ classes, ICU4X plural categories, and on the right, ICU4X plural operands, um, where we can call select and get the categories to add them to a set, and it's all uh, you know, linked across the FFI to our nice Rust implementation. Um, and so we will be able to just use this in Firefox, um, which is really exciting. Thank you. Uh, so if anyone will have more questions about particularly how to use IC4X in large code bases, um, Eric, Greg, Manish, and Shane, are here to answer all of them. <laughs> okay, and then here's the, the JavaScript demo. Um, so there we go, it's working. So um, this is just, just a little web page I made. Um, uh, and uh, just showing an example here of I uh, made a number and I'm, I just can show you how the plural form uh, changes. Every time I change it, it's calling IC for X to calculate the plural form. 
you can see um, how it's formatting the number in, in the Russian locale with the correct um, decimal separators and things. Here it is, I just changed it to the Bengali locale. And um, it, it uh, changes the numbering system and the grouping sizes. Um, and then I can change to Arabic. Um, and I, I also changed the uh, computer to, um, to, uh, to slow G, which means that, uh, so you could see a little bit of the delay there. When I was loading Arabic, it was a little bit of a delay, and then it loaded, and then the page refreshed. Um, or the, not the whole page, but just the numbers refreshed because it's async data loading. Um, and then when I switched back to Bengali, since Bengali was already loaded, I didn't have to load it again. Um, so then that was an instantaneous change. Um, so that all works, and that's all running in a WebAssembly and JavaScript. I want to point out that the size uh, here is what we were talking about earlier, is that for formatting all the data according to all the Unicode and CLDR rules, we're loading literally 500 bytes, which is unheard of in today's web, um, where you know, websites are 8 megabytes. Yeah. So this is, this is the edge um, optimization that we're, we're looking for in order to support Asynchronous data loading on IoT devices in the future. Yep, I'll, I'll just um, yeah. The, the the these numbers also are uh, like uh, like ZB said. These are um, just the core data for number formatting and plural rules. And uh, we have the system set up to just give the, like an extremely small uh, slice of data for um, for for that purpose. Um, I also, I, uh, when I was giving the laundry list, I forgot to give a shout out to Manish, who's done a lot of work on FFI and WebAssembly and basically architected this whole system to make this, this WebAssembly thing work um, um, with, with, with help from our, from our intern, Shadaj, who's not here today. Um, so yeah, thanks for that. And now a third demo, I'm going to, let's see, actually, wait, first before we go to the third demo, I can show you some of the code. Uh, this is just the uh, JavaScript code we have right now um, for uh, how you can uh, create and load the data. Um, so on the left side, I show like how I'm doing the async data loading. I just uh, load up the, 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 the data file, I wait for it to download with fetch, and then I just pass it into IC4X on WebAssembly, and then, um, yeah, that, that's basically it. On the right side, I'm showing how I use plural rules, for example. Um, I just, uh, this IC4X plural operands, IC4X plural rules is the WebAssembly uh, module, um, and then, um, yeah, you just uh, call dot create and then check for the success and then you use it. And that's basically all you need to do. And that all works. And the demo here is you want to see the code later. Now let's do the QT demo. I'll turn it back over to ZB for this one. Uh, this is just to showcase for people who would like to try integrating IC4X into a C++ code base. It may not be the most trivial thing to reverse engineer what we are doing in, uh, with, with uh, Firefox code base because it's so large. So I wrote a very hockey um, QT app that basically does the same thing as Shane was showing in, um, in JavaScript. I can type a number, it's getting formatted using IC4X, loading data, selecting the right pl plural category. I can switch a language on fly, it will retranslate um, the, the number and select the right category. All of that is happening dynamically. The code base is very similar. I'm going to show it in a second, but it uses exactly the same API, the same data, the same logic, a single algorithm. Um, so we are vastly minimizing the risk of increasing maintenance costs with you know, scaling programming languages environments, and we are minimizing the, the risk that uh, the code bases will diverge and you have to hunt edge differences between you know Bengali formatting in your Go internationalization API versus your PHP internationalization API. We're trying to put an end to this scale, uh, to this class of problems. And here is an example of um, a very um, quickly written C++ code that, um, that loads a fixed decimal, uh, creates it for a value, um, creates a fixed decimal format, and applies the formatting uh, into, into a result that this uh, display, this code is taken directly from the QT de demo, and there is a GitHub repository that I don't think we linked in the slides, but if you ask, we will share with you, uh, and you're free to explore it, play with it. Um, the same logic will apply to any other FFI target. Take it. Is it full screen? Where is 
So, um, so is it ready, right? So we showed you demos. Um, there's sample code, there are features, but uh, who's using it? Uh, we have helped a number of early adopters. Mozilla is one, Google is also uh, using it internally. Um, we have it in pre-release software, so nothing is in production yet, nothing that you can actually uh, take a look at, but it's in pre-release on microcontrollers and browsers. Uh, it's used as Rust library natively, and it's also used through the FFI WASM bindings in, in those projects. And as Shane mentioned before, the diplomat tool actually makes it so much easier to add a feature and generate a new binding and not worry about problems and manually writing things. And uh, as he also said, uh, we are looking for contributions to other languages. We would be very happy if we, saw, if we saw like C sharp bindings that look more native. Obviously, everybody can use the you know low level FFI C interface, but that just looks ugly, right? So the plugins help with that a lot. Um, our roadmap is version one should be out in April 2022. Um, we are approaching conformance with ECMO 402 tests. So in plural rules and locales, we are already at par, but with others, we need to run the test and see where we are. Um, there's no reason for you to wait. The whole stack is, is there. So you can do locale resolutions and then use plural rules, date formatting, number formatting already. Um, and more features are coming. So like collation, we expect to have in 2022. Segmentation is nearing the uh, this production year. this year. So we'll have all the major components uh, necessary soon. And then the last part is Zibi asking for contributions. It wouldn't be open source project if we didn't, at, at the end, hope that you will join us. Um, we do have a number of um, areas where we would love some help. And some of that is more technical. So if you are an engineer, if you write in Rust, or if you would like to learn Rust, we have mentorship uh, offers. We have a um, healthy community that can accept you, uh, identify a help wanted bugs, and so on. We also are looking for internationalization experts to reason about some of the areas that we are trying to push the boundary on. So we're not only catching up, we're also looking into what is the optimal API for selecting dates and, and formats in large organizations where your UX team sends you, you know, pixel perfect formatted date and says, now localize it to other languages, but make it look exactly like this in English. So is there a better way to, to reason about those APIs and, and uh, create APIs? Um, we, we still reason about language fallbacking and data fallbacking. So there are some, some areas, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna just list them. So uh, asynchronous IO is something that we already demo, but asynchronous code overall is a pretty major um, uh, adventure when working with code bases. And we could definitely use some help um, from, from people with experience in, in writing streams, asynchronous iterators, and so on. Um, architectural negotiation and fallbacks. The, that's an area where we are still trying to identify the trade-offs that we are willing to pay between loading all the data in a single language or risking data fragmentation where we load a partial data in a single language, then we need to load a fallback or some additional data, but we don't have it in the same language. What should happen? When should we fall back? What actually will cost more? Um, and, and so on. So there is, there is some interesting conversations happening, and we would love to extend this um, to, to a wider group of stakeholders. Uh, compatibility, of course, ECMO 402. We're happy to mentor anyone who wants to learn Rust, um, and FFIs, as we mentioned. So uh, for ECMO 402, from the 1.0 ECMO 402, the one that Neboisha authored in 2012, uh, we already support almost everything except of actually Collator, uh, which is currently in works. And it's a pretty major piece of code. So we definitely would also be happy to see more contributors to that. Um, we have the foundational level of collation, and now we need to write normalizers and, and collators. Um, from the full ECMA 402, as, as understood in 2021, that the way JavaScript internationalization works, uh, we do have a number of APIs that you see on the very left right side with a green box that are already done. The ones with the, the road, um, roadblock sign means we're, it's in works, and um, 
the um, looking glass is where we are looking at you and for your help. Um, for the, from the highest priority, if, you, if you're thinking about what we really would like to accomplish by April, the collator is, of course, the largest one. Um, we, we have to accomplish it, and it's going to be a large chunk of work. Um, we do have a number formatting, as we showed in the demos, but this is a simplified one. A number formatter is one of those rabbit holes where once you start thinking about it, the world is a number and numbers are everywhere and how you display different numbers it just shows in everything and then all other formatters in some way, shape or form format numbers. So extending that into a clean modern API based on the latest ICU for C APIs and, and ECMO for O2 APIs would be, would be wonderful and the more we can accomplish there, the more capabilities we'll provide in, in 1.0. So units, scientific notation, relative time format is how humans think about dates fairly often, so being able to show that, that's, that's one of the simpler APIs. And some reasoning about display names, that's a fairly common API need out of uh, larger software. Um, from the FFI, we have Rust, C++, C. We have JavaScript, as we showed, and WebAssembly. Uh, so if you, if you work in the latest fad of blockchain, we have WASM. Um, and we do not have a large number of programming languages targets that uh, we know are popular and we would love to see covered, like Python, Dart Go, .NET, Java, and, and others. That's it. Um, that was the presentation. This is where we are. And I hope that it was interesting. And we are now opening for questions. I want to give a plug to this. If, there, if there's only one thing that you do today, well, there's actually two things you, you should do today. One is fill out the speaker evaluations. But the second is to go on this link right here and sign up for our uh, for announcements um, relating to ICU for X because after you leave this room, we don't have any other way to uh, send you updates and announcements. Very low traffic email. Uh, so if you go to this link, which will keep up for the remainder of the slot, um, you know, please, uh, you should f fulfill that out. It's, it's just one field. Just put in your email address. Okay. Are there any questions? That's a great question. And how do you intend for that to uh, evolve in the future? That's a, that, that's a great question. Um, so I, ICU for C uh, remains the industry standard for uh, internationalization. ICU for X aims to bring ICU for C like functionality to areas that can't currently use ICU for C or where ICU for C is not the best tool for the job. For example, a web assembly, for example, mobile devices and, and low resource uh, devices. Um, where IC for C uh, currently doesn't uh, d doesn't do the job very well, so that th that's what we're focused on. That's that's that that's ex that's what we're uh, working toward is, is is supporting those those areas. Um, if if there's uh, clients who are um, who who like the, the the value proposition that IC for X brings to them, um, they're certainly welcome to to to, to choose IC for X and, and and evaluate it as as an option. Um, but you know, it's 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 not our goal to, to like you know replace IC for C or anything like that. Just just to make sure that we're on the same page there. These these are we're, we're, we we work very closely with the ICU uh, technical committee. We're, we're we're very close friends. ICU ICU technical committee is still very active, and can um, ICU for X's engineers are separate from the ICU technical committee engineers. So. They're, they're both uh, active projects, um, and they both do a great job. And our goal is to basically bring ICU functionality to platforms that current, can't currently use it. Follow yeah. Um, assuming that they're going to be separate going forward, well, even now, the, the areas where they have the same functionality, what work are you doing to make sure they produce the same results? Is that a guarantee you're making? Uh, so we're uh, following CLDR and ECMA for OSU standards and using the CLDR data. So um, our goal is, is for spec compliance with both CLDR and ECMA 402, passing all the tests. Um, and um, ultimately, um, you know, in, in areas where there's uh, common um, interfaces, for example, ECMA 402 gets a common interface, things like a date, pa date patterns and date skeletons, like there's very clear specifications around those where there's actually a right and a wrong answer, and our goal is to be spec compliant. Uh, in, in, in those areas. The, the additional thing I want to say is that one of the challenges we faced when we started the project 
was that it was not very easy for us to find test-driven data for ICU um, feature, features and compatibility. So we are investing, I, I don't think we're investing as much as I wish we did, but we are investing in building test-driven um, test uh, harnesses uh, with an intention that eventually you will be able to launch the same test suite against Go, Dart, PHP, Java, Rust, and so on. Um, and hopefully we will be able to launch the same test suite against ICU4C and see how far we are. That's kind of like a reverse of what should happen because we will test whether ICU4C is compatible with us. But the reason is that the ICU4C test uh, infrastructure is predominantly very bound to ICU4C and we cannot just pull it in. Um, but if we, if we see any incompatibilities, the aim is to, to have them down to zero. Um, and one of the ways we, we do this, as Shane mentioned, is that uh, a lot of browser engines are using ICU4C. So we can launch, it's called Test 262, which is a test suite for JavaScript internationalization. We can launch it through ICU4C powered engine, and we can launch it through ICU4X powered engine. And if there, there are no differences, then we can hope that at least the core functionality is the same. Um, so that's where we are. It is less than perfect, but testing always is. <laughs> are there any other questions for us? It's a quiet room. Oh, there's a question. So um, in your demo, you showed how you're loading all this data. Now, do you, does the client have to explicitly unload it, or do we have some way of managing it so when we get this data? Uh, yeah, so uh, it's, it's, it's a good question. The, the, the design of the, of the data loading architecture is to make the, um, the uh, data caching uh, configurable based on client needs because different clients have different needs. For example, maybe a mobile device has low memory and it doesn't want to keep a lot of uh, stuff in memory, um, but uh, so some, some other higher resource environment might, might want to have a large cache so it doesn't have to, have to make a lot of network calls, for example. So different... Uh, the, um, uh, th there's no one-size-fits-all solution to data caching, and, and th 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 that's a really um, important part of the architecture choices uh, that are in the data provider, is, is that those decisions about data caching need to be made on a client-by-client -client basis. Uh, so um, so uh, the, the design is, is to allow all those different um, methods for how you do a data caching and, and uh, keeping things in memory. But yes, that, that, that's the design. I also wanted to mention, since, since you asked about the, um, the data loading, is that we are not directly loading, or you can directly load CLDR JSON. But we are also providing a schema that is intended to survive CLDR version upgrades. So the same CLDR, so, sorry, the same ICU4X data for German dates could be loaded from CLDR 39, 40, 41. It's intended to work across the versions. And part of the architecture, I, I uh, recommend uh, looking at the slides from the previous year uh, talk where Shane was talking more about this, is that we also want to allow for chained data providers. Uh, that's uh, intended to supply the needs of organizations that want to overload some of the CLDR data with their corporate um, decision um, adjustments. But majority of data can be just transparently flowing from CLDR, um, CLDR uh, data for, you know, IC4X CLDR data for, for version one, version two, through some proxy of like Mozilla overflow, over, overloads uh, into, into the runtime and then cached or, or uh, loaded, unloaded. So the, the whole data provider is a major, very sophisticated piece of technology that is at the core of the, uh, of the wins and flexibility that we are building here for the, for the modern um, internationalization needs, the client apps. Are we, Shane? Uh, uh, I'm glad you asked, yeah. Um, uh, we, we, we are collaborating quite closely with them. I'm one of the co-champions for that proposal. And um, yeah, uh, our, uh, one of the big things that's coming up in this quarter is we're working on the non-Gregorian calendar support and we're using the temporal APIs as the basis for, um, 
for, for, for how to express the data models for, for dates, um, as well as for time zones. Eric, wherever Eric went, um, is, is, also, is doing the, the, the time zone side, and we're um, using that as a basis. The, our hope is that IC4X is an implementation of Temporal, so that it's very easy. If you want to use Temporal, IC4X can be your implementation of Temporal, especially the time zone and calendar stuff, which is very complex. So I'm really glad you asked. Uh, just for the people in the audience who are not very familiar with Temporal, Temporal is a new approach to storing uh, dates and times in JavaScript. It's a proposal for JavaScript that is intended to, um, let's say, improve on the design of date and time in, in, in JavaScript. Uh, it's a very sophisticated, I think it's five years in the work. So in IC4X, we're very lucky that we can look at the design decisions they made and we are already designing our daytime format in compatibility with, uh, with the calendar systems and time zone needs of, of the temporal proposal. So, yeah, lucky. Are there any other questions for us? We have four minutes left. We, have four minutes left. we can give you four more minutes. You can be first for lunch. One or yeah, we could be first for lunch. Look. So this is a curiosity. Why is, uh, why is uh, Firefox I don't know. <laughs> I really don't. No, so, so I, I can I'll give a partial answer. Uh, we're, so at the startup of Firefox processes, so first of all, it's a multi-process uh, engine, which means that we're installing mul multiple processes. Each one of those processes is loading available databases of fonts per local, um, dictionaries, um, language packs, uh, available locales that we want to broadcast to the web, the locales that the user, and all of that is stored as strings, like BCP47 strings. So it does load. I, I think the number is excessively high. Uh, it was very convenient when I was testing performance of ICU4X, but seeing it from this angle, maybe I should report a bug, you're right. <laughs> All right, uh, then I think we will let you be the first for lunch. Thank you so much for attending this talk.